Hello everyone, my name is Shelby and this is the series where I reveal what is inside these mystery pottery molds I found on Gumtree. Hello and welcome to mold 65. This one has a lot of holes, probably the most holes that I've ever had to pour in one of these molds. So there's four on the top and then two on the sides, so a total of six and it's a two piece mold. So I pour the first side up, you can see it's sort of dripping out and then I pour the other two holes up to reveal a crocodile alligator. I need to look up what it is. Let me look it up what it is. <laughs> it's a gator. <laughs> it's, it's an alligator because it's got a round, point, not a pointy snout like our crocodiles here. The alligator has a more rounder snout, which makes sense because most of these molds are from an American origin. So I totally get that it'd be an alligator over a crocodile. So I just showed you the mold. It has no indication of what it is on the outside. No brand, no year, nothing. Uh, that's fine. Uh, I don't I don't have anything to show you other than that's what the mold looks like. So hopefully you'll find it on your benches. I then had to cut the base of it off and carve up both the back legs and attach them. This one was quite tricky because I kind of had to maneuver it in the correct way. And it was really hard to get in there and refine the join section whereas on other pieces I sort of have a lot more room to sort of sculpt in there and make it all smooth and clean but this week I decided that we'll do something a little bit different in our glazing technique and I'm going to try out for the very first time bubble glazing so I'm really excited because I've always watched other potters do bubble glazing and it looks so much fun so the way it works is you sort of mix color into some soapy water blow bubbles and then the color in the bubbles leaves a mark on your piece and it can create these really cool barnacly scaly type textures and you can have a lot of fun with it so here i am mixing up some soapy water i just have these little pots the one on the left is one i've painted and the jar ones a Makona jar and the other two are little op shop finds I just mix up some soapy water so I can have a variation of color because a lot of the bubble glazes I've seen people do they only do one tone or one color for their work but I wanted to not just do the one color I wanted to elevate it even further and do a number of different bubble colors and layer them on top of each other to get some really cool effects happening on these I was gonna say crocodiles, alligators. So here I am adding the underglaze to the pot and when it was in the water, they actually look like these weird little wormies. <laughs> so I had to show you that. But once I mixed them in, they did mix in pretty well to the water, but I did have to keep mixing them to stop them from settling. Before I went straight on to the alligator, I decided to do a test piece. So I got a mug that I'd already poured and started to have a play with my blowing technique. <laughs> so I started to play around with what I needed to do, how high I needed to have it, how many bubbles I needed to blow, how dark I wanted it. So I ended up adding some more color to make sure that the pigment was right in between all of the bubbling and once you add the water you're sort of watering down the underglaze which means you almost need like a gazillion coats to get it to the point where it's not watered down you still need three coats i did a test because i didn't want to just go straight on the on the alligator i nearly keep saying crocodile i didn't want to go straight on the alligator and essentially stuff it up and make it all wet and not be able to attach any more bubbles because i sort of ruined it on the first go so I had success with the mug. I did notice that I have bisque by the crocodile, the crocodile, the alligators. <laughs> I did uh, bisque the alligators and the mug was not bisque by it. So it was just still the clay. And I noticed that um, adding more water to the greenware made it really soft and it didn't work as well as the bisque wear. So that's just a little point um, that I learned by doing this. But let's get into the actual doing it. It was so much fun. I was actually really nervous to do it because I was like, what if I do it wrong? But it was so much fun. Before I knew it, I had already bubble glazed everything. Like I was like, it went really quickly because I was just like, ah, 
had blowing bubbles everywhere and my bench got so soapy but you can see where the bubbles really work is where you can see the color in the intersection so like the connecting point of each bubble when you can see the color really strong in those that's where I got the best results the best technique I found was to sort of get some bubbles on there and just let them sit there because once they popped that was when the color sort of stopped and allowed itself to sort of really sink in but when you did pop the bubbles before they were ready I noticed that the water in that bubble would sort of murk the lines a little bit um, but yeah real cool cool I really liked it it was a lot of fun and it was like the cro croc it was like that alligator was having a bubble bath. I recommend this. If you want to try out this technique, I recommend it. It is so much fun. I really love doing this. So whilst I was in the studio, I had helping hands that day and they were watching me and going, that looks like so much fun. I was like, oh, do you want to do something? And we had some moldy biscuits that they picked out and they started doing the, the cow skulls with the green color that I had left over. And as they were doing that, I was watching them and I thought, how cool would it be to sort of pass the piece through the bubbles rather than putting it straight on top? Why don't we pass it through? And we found out that there was this other really cool technique that allowed the bubbles to stay on and really get their details on. And then also using all the sort of like small bubbles on the table and dabbing them on gave it more of a barnacle look as well. So I kind of wish that happened before I did the, the crocket, Ugh, the alligator, <laughs> I'm not going to get it right this whole video. Um, the alligator is that we, we learnt this afterwards and I wish we learnt it before because it, it, I think it worked a lot better just having the bubbles just stay in place rather than moving with lots of water because it meant that the color in between those bubble intersections really had time to develop and didn't smudge or move around with the water density of lots of bubbles covering the pieces. Once I had let those dry, I added the little eyes, I bisque-fied that, all the color in place, and then I glazed these critters. I'm really happy with how some of these colors looked and I did notice that even underneath has this really cool texture from sitting and resting on, on that bubble bath that they were in. So I dipped these in and then sponged off their little feet just to make sure that there was no glaze excess and then I'm also glazing the skulls and the experimental mug just to show you I guess because I wanted to show you that this was a very experimental week and we learned some things about this technique that I think are really cool and wanted to show you just in case you decide to try this out. One thing I will say is I don't think the bubbling technique will work with glaze because it gets everywhere, it gets on the feet of everything. Um, so definitely do it with just under glaze because otherwise you're just gonna have a real hard time getting the glaze off the base of the pieces. Whereas under glaze on the base of pieces in the kiln doesn't really matter as much. I also just don't know how safe it would be to do it with glazes. This is my favorite time of the week when they all go in the kiln. Well, this week I actually enjoyed the bubble glazing a lot more than this, but this is my favorite time seeing the finished results of all your hard work. So I pop them in and here is the opening the next day. They are so much funkier than what I thought they were going to look like. I don't know why, but this time I didn't think that the underglaze was going to pop as much. I think because with the bubbling, I thought it wouldn't be as pigmented, but it still came out so impressive. I love each and every one of these and they've got their own little quirkiness so the first one I did was a greeny yellow one I really think this one's quite cool I love the subtlety of the color I like the way that the yellow and the green mixes and the different variation of the bubbles over the scaly parts of the tail the pink and orange was one or well it was purple it was purple but the purple mixing with the orange makes it look like a pink and orange one I love that how this one came out. I wasn't expecting this one to look so fun and cool, but it got a lot of these really cool small bubbles underneath. And then this one was just a mix of all the colors. I just went ham with the yellow, orange, purple, and the green, and so many different bubble textures. I really like these, and I really like this technique, particularly mixing the colors. I think that's what really elevated this design is because with what I've seen with other potters, they only do the one color, but doing multiple colors gave it this depth and interest. Here we have the experimental pieces, which we pass through the bubble chain and also use the smaller bubbles to dab onto the pieces to make these barnacle like clusters. 
I actually love the potential of this experiment because I can see some corals in the foreground and giving it this depth of field, beautiful underwater coral seascape, which would be so amazing. And if I'm being completely honest with this bubbling technique, I thought it had the potential to look really childish like a kindergarten project, which there's nothing wrong with that. But adding the extra colors and finding out that barnacle texture really made this work for me. And I'm really excited to try it out again. And I, I just can't recommend it highly enough because it was a lot of fun. Anywho, let me know what you think of this mold in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and here's your sneak peek for the next reveal.